allemaal and welcome to this week's episode of Tulip TV. I'm Barbara Arnold and our assistant is trying to kill me with the reflector. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, maybe this is better. Uh, behind us we've got BC Place and uh, did you know that BC Place was built by a Dutch company? Of course our producer is German and he claims that it was built by a German company. But we all know better. It was Mammut and they built the roof was their equipment and their cranes. And incidentally, it takes 20 minutes to open and close that roof. Pretty amazing. Anyway, here's what's coming up next. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. So here, this is one uh, one of our products too. So this is a a new um, what they call it a goji berry. It's a uh, it's a very health uh, healthy berry uh, with a lot of antioxidants. So we kind of fell into the trend of um, starting to grow this kind of berry, as a lot of people are going into uh, uh, edibles and uh, and healthy uh, living lifestyle. So and then uh, here we have another uh, heritage geranium. So which is. It, which is a double one, it looks sort of like a mini rose, so actually we revived this variety from uh, probably back to uh, the early 1900s. So we just uh, call it an heirloom geranium, which we introduced this year. We've come up with another uh, Agapantha, so this one is a brand new variety uh, that was originated in California. And uh, it's called Queen Mum, and uh, so far we've introduced it in the market. and with somewhat limited success, but usually when you introduce new varieties, people kind of sit on their hands initially, and then once they see it on the market for a year or two, then they start getting into buying it. So uh, it's always difficult to introduce a new one with big volume, so we would like to uh, sort of have to tread carefully in terms of uh, finances as well. Well, the peak time for flowers, obviously, is it starts with Valentine uh, in the new year, uh, which, of course, uh, I guess everybody buys their sweetheart some, uh, some type of flower, mainly roses and other products, tulips. And then, of course, the next big holiday is Easter. Uh, so hydrangeas and Easter lilies and other lilies will be sold, which is big. And then for uh, spring and Mother's Day, I mean, basically everybody's into buying plants for Mother's Day. And the variety is from here till, uh, well, till the moon, so to speak. And so our big peak of selling the product is uh, April, May, and June. And then for the rest of the year, there's some holidays like Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas. Christmas, yeah. Christmas is big as well. Uh, but Christmas traditionally is like a lot of poinsettias and uh, so limited on other, other plants. Most of the growers today are all Canadian, uh, so like they're from all different backgrounds. So Dutch background, Norwegian background, Danish background. Um, East Indian background, so like, and they all learn from each other. Yeah, of course, yeah. So everybody is uh, is sort of learning, and companies get bought and sold, and of course uh, the the skills get passed on to the next generation that uh, operates the uh, the facilities. My name is uh, Tom Mulleder. I'm my background is actually Austrian Swiss. Uh, I do have a relative in Holland, that's my closest connection to the country, but I, I am 
very much uh, uh, aware of what goes on in Holland, having been a frequent visitor there. Uh, in my early days, uh, the company of Gollum uh, went to Holland at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. So I have intimate knowledge of the Dutch uh, network, so to speak, in Canada. I work with girls. I have been in, uh, involved in this business for nearly 40 years. Uh, retired for nine, uh, but still very active, uh, at least on, for another couple of years, and uh, then I am going to retire. So I'm, I'm still uh, very much involved in the grow community, uh, uh, selecting growers, uh, soliciting growers, uh, sometimes in you know, saddled with the task of firing growers that are not uh, performing to what is expected of them. Um, that's basically what I was retained for because of my intimate knowledge. I was uh, the CEO of this company for 32 years before I retired. What we're looking for is that the grower, the grower can work within the system, which is a Dutch auction system. And it doesn't suit everyone that type of marketing. Uh, and, and it has to be, uh, it's a process that involves uh, making the growers familiar with the process of selling their products the Dutch auction system way. And, uh, and the screening that is involved takes anywhere between a year and a half to two years uh, in order to ascertain that yes, it works for you, you have the type of product that is good for, for our business here, and, and like I say, it, it works for the grower. It has to work both ways. And, and that's a process that uh, requires some, some care and some, uh, some diligent work. of the size of the flower business in Canada and, and also British Columbia and this facility, the auction. I mean, the local auction here will do about 45 million in the, in the wholesale level. But of course, there's a much bigger uh, trade out there in the, in the Lower Mainland and in BC and across Canada. So across Canada, the, uh, at the farm gate level, it's over a billion dollars that, uh, that is being done in floral trade. And the industry across Canada employs uh, over 35,000 people altogether in terms of greenhouses and florists and garden centers. So it is uh, a fairly uh, industrious business. And so uh, flowers get shipped right across the country. So some things are growing here and being shipped to the prairies. Uh, some products from Ontario come uh, west to the prairies and as well as to BC. And of course we also have the north-south uh, trade uh, selling flowers from here to California. And of course, we're buying also from California to use plants up here. So the Dutch auction system works on the system that works backwards. So let's say the starting price is at $10 and instead of going up like most auctions, this auction goes in reverse, so it goes down. So if there's a buyer then that finds the right level of the right price that he feels that he can afford or wants to pay, then he pushes the button on the keypad and stops the clock and then he has the option of uh, buying one or two or five or all that's available on the cart or left on the lot number. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad.
Yes, so I'm Alan Franey, the festival director of the Vancouver International Film Festival, and we are just about to enter our 31st edition, and we're showing about 380 films from all over the world over 16 days on 10 screens in downtown Vancouver. So it's, it's a big festival actually, we're very lucky to be here in Vancouver producing a film festival because our population is diverse, people from all over the world, many languages, and a great interest in the world at large. So people want to be able to travel to other countries, hear other languages, and hear Canadian stories on screen. So we were large in terms of the number of films, I think the fifth largest in North America, but also in terms of the audience size. The highlights, the trends, if you uh, might want to say, are the particular number of films that are animated. It, animation is working into film in interesting ways because people are learning the tools of computer-based animation. So it's not just the sort of kid-oriented animated films, but animation techniques coming into films that are very interesting. Music is also more and more important in cinemas. So that's a new phenomenon. Uh, not, the strength of non-fiction films is very important. We've always seen the world's great filmmakers working in dramatic forms, but a lot of the world's great filmmakers are working in non-fiction form now. And the line is blurring between fiction and nonfiction in very interesting ways. Uh, once again, the Netherlands have been involved in making films in different parts of the world. It's a, a Dutch film, uh, Gotthard Schuh, who's about a photographer who's traveling to uh, Bali and so on. I would recommend Hemel, Sasha Pollock's film. She's a young woman director from the Netherlands who really got a lot of attention when that film premiered in Berlin this year. There's also Frank Sheffer's film, Goes Around, Time Passing. Frank Sheffer is one of the best directors in the world for music films. And this is about a sort of east-west collaboration involving Europe and Iran. <laughs> My name is Jacqueline Dupuis. I'm the executive director of the Vancouver International Film Festival. It's one of the largest film festivals in North America, certainly one of the most successful. One of the most special things about VIV is, uh, is its audiences. We are really fortunate to have a, a very large community here in Vancouver of film lovers and uh, of roughly 150,000 of them that come out to devour over 400 films at the festival each year. And uh, so we're just really fortunate to have such an amazing event. I joined the festival from uh, Calgary, Alberta, where I was previously the, the executive director of the Calgary International Film Festival for the last seven years. So I'm just really thrilled to be here and working at an organization with uh, within a community of uh, film lovers and cultural enthusiasts. The festival here is about five times the size as the one in Calgary. But again, it's really the audience. I mean, the, 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 the uh, audience here in Vancouver has been coming to the festival for a long time. It's 31 years old. They've really embraced the culture of film. Um, they love it, they devour it, and it's the, the festival atmosphere is just, just incredible. So. <laughs> My name is Mark Ratzlaff and I'm the co-producer, cinematographer and edit editor for the uh, documentary Blood Relative. Uh, it was directed by Namisha Mukherjee, whose last film was 65 Red Roses. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to be premiering here at the Vancouver Film Festival. The film is uh, a documentary that follows uh, an activist, Vinay, uh, as he takes on the Indian government to get free medicine for these two uh, children who are below the poverty line. Uh, they suffer from a, a rare blood disease called thalassemia and uh, without this medicine they can't, they can't live normal lives and most of them don't survive. 
And through the process of the film, you see Vinay and these kids that he takes, uh, takes on as his cause uh, become a family that uh, are bound together by more than, than blood. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to be we're really excited to be premiering at the Vancouver Film Festival. It's great to finally share the project with so many of the talented people that worked on the film. And uh, it's just such an awesome uh, group of people and audience that comes out for this festival. So we're looking forward to uh, sharing it with them. Uh, my name is Darcy Van Polgeest. I'm a director uh, from Vancouver. And uh, I have a uh, film in this year's festival called Corvus. And Corvus is a... Um, it's a love letter to um, comic books and film noir. It's sort of a, it's a, it's a genre film. It's sort of visually poetic and a little bit creepy, I guess. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Lynn and I, we always say how lucky we are to live in this community. And um, there's just so many wonderful people. And uh, as she says, when we were the mayor, we got to meet all these people. And why don't we introduce them to each other? And uh, Lynn likes to say that the public salon is introducing Vancouver to itself. And uh, I think that's quite well said. In uh, southeastern Switzerland, there's a canton called Le Grison. Le Grison is Switzerland's largest canton in area and maybe the least populated. One of the very few, the population is very small. It consists of primarily mountains, and due to the mountains, tens of thousands of villages. And over the centuries, in those little valleys, the Romanche language developed so that one valley would actually not be able to talk to the next. And I can tell you, uh, my grandmother, who, who would be 150 years old now, died about 50 years ago at age almost 100, only spoke Romance, and that's the only person I know that only spoke Romance. <laughs> my wife and I were invited to a, a, an evening of music with the Bar Borealis Quartet and it had been sponsored and put together by a fellow we didn't know, we knew he had been, was at one time mayor of, West, of Vancouver, Sam Sullivan. So I went there, and here was Sam in his wheelchair, and uh, I introduced myself, my name is Tony Cavelti, and said, your daughter is married to, uh, to uh, Kim Zhao. He was my role model. This man here said that my son-in-law was his role model. And so it, be, it is. My son-in-law went to school with Sam, uh, also with Lynn. They all knew each other. And my son-in-law was a very good father or a, 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 a brother to a family that he had kind of almost brought up. So he was a good, good guy. He's been married now with my daughter for about 24 years. And they're a beautiful couple and have two beautiful children. Yeah. Uh, a number of years ago, I was walking down Seymour Street and I was stopping at the light on, I think it was done uh, on, on, on the stoplight. There was a couple standing next to me and surprising, the gentleman was shorter than I am, which I don't often see, and the lady was in shorter. And the lady says to the name, in Swiss German, Frog der Herdorf. Now that's how German is. Swiss German is totally a dialect, so Fragen Sie diesen Herrn would be in good job. So Frog der Herdorf. So now I knew they were Swiss. So the guy turned to me and says, uh, 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 Chinatown. Chinatown? So I said, in Swiss German, this uh, is Chinatown, when it's grad up, blah, blah, blah. And then he said something that struck me. He said to me, Danke. He then didn't say Danke. 
He said, dumb cut. So I said to him, where did you come from? And the man said, oh, you wouldn't know, I'm from Brian. I said, when you the Brian? Richard Chais was Romansh, then you speak Romansh. Well, if you say with my Korea's Chinatown, and I use the word China, Luma is gradual, Luma is stretch, and Luma is pensioniest, and Luma is slow. And the guy kept on walking and said, I'm gradual, French, and kept on walking. I came home and told my wife, and she said, Why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you bring them for dinner? Because we are most likely related to half a <laughs> I have a feeling that he went back, told his people, we were in Vancouver, they speak from lunch there, I guess. <laughs>
And remember, we are independently produced, so we rely completely on viewers like you. If you'd like to make a donation, please go to our website and click on Donate. On behalf of everybody here at Tulip TV, we'd like to thank you for watching, and we hope we'll see you again next week. Tot ziens! And I'm gonna kill you with this thing! Mm -hmm.